Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this fresh market cooking demonstration, Cooking with Holiday Spices, facilitated by Ashley Van Sice, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and professionally trained chef. If this is your first time participating in a Cancer Support Community Atlanta program, we invite you to visit our website and complete a new attendee form to stay connected to all future programs. Hey everybody, we're back again. Um, <laughs> The kitchen feels empty without you, but I'm glad that we can uh, see you on the computer. Actually, this is going to be our last uh, cooking class in this location. We're moving to a new kitchen next time. So um, this is kind of like the end of an era in this kitchen, because I think I've been teaching in this kitchen since like, I don't know, 2000. I don't know, 2012, maybe something like that. It's been a little while. Um, so you'll have to catch up with us in January to see our new layout. Um, today I am highlighting holiday spices. So I'm using things like ginger, cinnamon. I'm gonna sneak in some cloves. Uh, cumin is not holiday, but it's gonna fit with these flavors. Coriander, uh, curry powder, uh, cayenne. So those are just a few of the spices. Um, and I've got two different recipes. There should be a recipe handout you can click on and open up on your computer. You can kind of follow along with us. Um, I am gonna start with the granola recipe. And this is called gingerbread granola because it uses ground ginger um, along with some cloves and cinnamon. So I've got a large bowl here. I'm just gonna start by measuring out the main ingredient, which is oats. We have old fashioned oats. These are just um, dry oats. They're nothing special. You don't have to get the fancy brand. You can get um, whatever old fashioned oats are on sale. Um, I am measuring three and a quarter cups. Don't do steel cut oats. Don't do the instant oats. You wanna stick with the old fashioned rolled oats for this because um, the steel cut oats are gonna, they won't bake well in the oven. They'll get kind of crunchy. These will um, kind of absorb the flavors and get soft. Still crunchy, but definitely more soft. Okay, so a little bit more of this we're doing three and a quarter. The measurements don't have to be exact on this. So you don't have to worry too much, but okay, that's our rolled oats. Then I'm going to add some sugar into this. I'm just using regular plain cane sugar. You can use white sugar. Um, you can use a fancy sugar if you want to, like a coconut sugar. Um, one, but you do want to make sure that it is like a crystallized type of sugar. We are going to add maple syrup as well. Two, three. I think you guys can unmute yourself and ask a question if you want to too while I'm while I'm cooking. I don't think you have to wait till the end. So if you, if you need clar clarification on anything or you want to ask a question, please ask. All right. So that I'm going to just let that hang out there for a second while I chop up some nuts. This was just a mixed nut. Um, blend that I bought at the store. I have pecans, uh, pistachios, almonds, cashews in here. But you can use any mix that you have. If you have walnuts, those would be really nice in this. Um, and I'm using about a cup and a three fourths, so almost the whole container. Again, you don't have to like measure this too carefully, but I would, since these are whole and they're pretty big, I would chop these a little bit. You can just chop them by hand. Just kind of run your knife over top on the cutting board. You can, you don't have to be too small, but I just want them to be more bite-sized pieces. And it's okay if they're raw because they're going to get toasted in the oven. All those nice flavors are going to come out. Nuts are super good source of healthy fat and vitamins like vitamin E really nice to have early in the morning. All right, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Make sure they don't, try not to get them to fly off the countertop too much. 
if you want to run these through the food processor to chop them, you can certainly do that. It just means you have to wash the food processor at the end, but that is totally fine. Also, if you want to have them whole in your granola, you don't, you know, you don't have to do it this way. Okay, so these go into our bowl. Put this over here. So like I said, any combination of nuts or just one type of nut will work. Okay, so I'm just gonna give those a quick stir. These are sort of like all of our dry ingredients. We're gonna add uh, the spices next. So we have cinnamon, which smells amazing. And we're, we have about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we've got ground ginger, which is how we're getting is how we're getting the name of this. So ground ginger, not fresh ginger. This is actually dried ground ginger. It has a bit of a different flavor. So we have three fourths of a teaspoon of that. Two, like I said, rough measuring is totally fine. And then we have a little bit of ground clove. This is optional. Just a touch of that. And then a little bit of salt, which we have back here. Hang on, let me grab a little bowl for this. I'll just pour some salt in here. And we'll just do a little pinch of salt just to help kind of bring out the flavors. Stir that all together pretty easy, very easy so far actually. And then I'm going to work on the sort of the wet ingredients, but they're not necessarily wet. What we've got, if I can open this container. <laughs> oh, hang on. This is a coconut oil. Okay, got it. <laughs> coconut oil. So coconut oil is taking the place of butter, which you would normally have in a granola recipe. And um, the nice thing about coconut oil is that it's a plant-based uh, source of fat, but it acts the same way as butter in that it hardens when it's cold and then it softens when it's hot, just like butter. So I'm gonna fill this. It's a little tricky to measure it, but like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. And since it's cold outside and it's a little chilly in our kitchen, the coconut oil is hard, which is totally fine. Just a little bit more. But the nice thing about this is that it's going to act the same way as butter does in that when the granola hardens, or I mean, when the granola cools, the um, coconut oil is gonna kind of bind everything together and make it nice and crunchy. So that's our quarter of a cup. I'm gonna put it into our saucepan over here because we're gonna warm it up with the molasses and the maple syrup. So I'm just trying to scrape this out the best I can. That's good enough. Put this back here, close these up. <laughs> All right, now we have syrup. So maple syrup, this is pure maple syrup, not like pancake syrup. This is the maple that comes from the tree, the real maple. So we have a third of a cup. It's gonna help sweeten our granola and give it a good maple flavor. And then we have molasses, kind of a unique ingredient, but gives it a really nice flavor as a like the gingerbread men cookies. So two tablespoons of that. Super thick. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this on a low heat so that everything can kind of blend together. The nice thing about this recipe 
especially making it around this time of year, is that it's, it's um, you can double it, make a double batch, keep some for yourself, of course, and then give, make some little um, gift bags and give them to neighbors, friends. It's always kind of like a unique, you can attach the recipe to it. It's a nice little food gift. Put it in a jar, like a mason jar or something. All right, so that's the molasses. And then we have a little bit of vanilla extract. Same with thing with the vanilla, get the real vanilla that comes, that's made from a, like the plant, the vanilla plant, not the vanilla imitation. You'll get so much better flavor with this. And did you guys know that vanilla beans, these, this vanilla extract is made from vanilla beans. The vanilla beans actually grow at the botanical gardens here in Atlanta. If you go there, you can see them um, growing. And I believe it's like over in the orchid area. Has anybody seen that? Can you chime in if you've seen that? I know. Yes, it's an orchid. It's an orchid. Okay, I was, I was going to say that, but I wasn't 100% sure. It, so it actually grows on the orchid plant, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, and it takes, from what I remember, it takes a long time for it to grow. And so that's one of the reasons why it's so expensive. But worth the price because the flavor is amazing. All right, so I'm just stirring this here. I'm just kind of melting it all together. The coconut oil is still kind of chunky. But I've got it on a medium heat. Is anybody making granola at home? Is anybody eating granola at home? <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know there's so many different kinds to buy in the store. We also eat granola sometimes in our house and um, there's a lot of good brands to buy, but it's kind of nice to make it yourself every once in a while because you can control the, you know, the amount of sugar, the ingredients and all that stuff. And there is some healthy stuff in this one. Okay, just a, another minute on this. Okay, and then you don't need to simmer it or anything like that. You're just trying to like melt it all together. Let's go back to our bowl. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in here. Stir it around, get everything nice and evenly coated. All the flavors. Is anybody doing any food gifts this year for holidays? Our children that live in Africa are returning for um, uh, at Christmas time, and there'll be 13 of us making cookies together. Oh my gosh, I love that. Are you making gingerbread cookies? Um, yes, we do make like a ginger snack sort of. Well, it's not, oh. not as dry as a snack. Ginger spice cookie, yes. Got it. Nice. That's amazing. Where are you? Are you hosting this into your house? No, I'm not that brave. I have a, another daughter-in-law who's very brave. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was going to say, yes, brave is a good way to say that. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Okay. So sheet pan here. I just have some parchment paper on this. You could also use aluminum foil, but just something on the pan to make it easy to clean up is helpful. Um, and then I'm just gonna pour this onto the pan. It should just be, it should be enough for one pan. Let's see, it smells awesome, by the way. We haven't even cooked it yet. One thing I will say on both of these recipes, because we're talking about spices today, it is worth mentioning um, the freshness of your dried spices um, because they do, go bad. And once they expire or, you know, they're past their best by date, it's not that they're going to make you sick, but if you eat them, but they're just not going to taste very good. They're just, flavor is pretty much gone when they have sat around for too long. So it's worth checking that out and making sure they're super fresh. Okay. This is going to go in the oven, 325 
for about, what do we say, like 20 minutes or so. And that is it. So it's pretty easy. I mean, very easy, actually. Not too much cleanup either, which I appreciate. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way. You guys ask me any questions that you have about this recipe while I switch it out to the other recipe. Okay. Um, I was under the impression that uh, coconut oil was not a healthy oil. Uh, coconut oil is, um, when, when used in moderation, it is totally fine. It has saturated fat in it, which might be what you're, you know, what you're referring to. Is that right? Yes. So it has saturated fat, just like butter does, but um, the research is still out on this so it's still in question, but from what we know, it acts differently in the body than saturated fat from an animal. So it clogs the arteries. It's harder, you know, it's harder for it to clog the arteries. And um, so it's possibly better for heart health. Um, but if you already have, um, if you're already, you know, suffering from some of the things in heart disease, like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, that kind of stuff, then you definitely should limit saturated fat altogether, no matter the source. But if you're healthy and you don't have any heart issues, um, coconut oil in moderation should be totally fine. And if you're at all worried about that, you can always switch out to olive oil in this recipe. It works just fine. The end texture is not quite as like clumpy and crunchy, but the flavor is all still there. So it's just a little bit of a different texture if you do want to use the olive oil. It will work. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Sure. Okay, let me get a clean board here and a clean knife. And then we're going to be on to making our soup. So here's our big soup pot. We're doing butternut squash. This. So when that granola comes out of the oven, I'm going to show you how to, um, how I like to serve it, which involves yogurt and ma plain yogurt and maple syrup. <laughs> okay. Any other questions on that? Gingerbread, granola. Ashley. Yeah. Where can we access the printed recipe? Is that available? The recipe is should be available in the Zoom chat box. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Hey there, Emily. I can add it again um, so everybody can see it. So you should be able to click on that and then you can print it at home or just look at it on your computer. Is that right? that should work. Yeah, so I just tried um, downloading added it back the one that was out there, but it would not um, download properly. Uh, you oh. have to select the way to open it, and everything that we selected just comes up, up with coded stuff. So we weren't should able be a to open the file. Okay, I just re-entered it into the chat box. So if you have issues opening this one, if you want to send me your email address, and I can send it... Um, in an email and see if that helps. Was anyone successful opening it? This one looks like it should work because it looks like it's sent in PDF form instead of the other way that the previous one was. We're in the yes, I have no problem now. opening it. Okay, good. I could open the first one. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and start some chopping. There's a little bit of chopping involved with this and I'm gonna teach you how to cut this guy. This big butternut squash, um, which is huge and heavy, but it's, um, I'm gonna move these this way a little bit. So that's our stock. Okay, so on to the butternut squash recipe. This is a curried butternut squash. We have some of the same spices. Well, we have one of the same spices, cinnamon. Um, We're also using a lot of other spices. <laughs> We're using um, curry, cumin, coriander, cayenne, all the C's. <laughs> Um, and uh, so I'm going to get started on cutting up three vegetables that you almost always see in soups. 
um, onion, celery, and carrots. All right, so onion first. I'm gonna leave the peel on. And run my knife through. I just thought of something. Let me set the timer on this uh, over here. That way I don't forget. I'm already starting to smell. This smells amazing. Let's see, where's the timer? Timer, guys. Timer. Cook time timer. There it is. <laughs> I can read. Now we're on. Okay. That's it. Okay. Back to the onion. Okay, so I just cut it in half. It still has the peel. Now I'm going to be able to easily take that peel off. It should just come off with that little first layer of skin here. Okay, now on to chopping. Gonna move it to the end of our board here. And then we have it on its side. I'm cutting it horizontally. Helps to have a very sharp knife. And then vertically, the other direction, or one direction rather, and then the other way to get a nice even cut. And then the other side. So this soup is pureed at the end. So it's got a nice smooth texture. Really kind of sweet because it's, well, it's got all the spices in it, but it's also got a secret ingredient, which some people cannot taste, but it gives it kind of a sweetness. It's the apple that gets blended in and cooked in, which is kind of a unique ingredient to have in a soup. I would say actually a very unique, but it goes really well with the flavor of the butternut squash. All right, I'm gonna turn on our burner here. I've got a little bit of olive oil. Just enough to kind of give our veggies something to cook in. I'm going to let that warm up before I add that. Spread it around here a little bit. We can start working on our carrot actually while that warms up. So I have two carrots here but they're pretty small so even though your recipe says one carrot I'm going to go ahead and do two Just gonna go ahead and cut them at the same time. This recipe is also flexible. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about the measurements. We're gonna adjust the flavors at the end. Let's see if our oil is hot. Go ahead and add these in. Okay, I'm gonna do our celery. We just have one stalk of celery. Everything's already been washed. Just remove those pieces. And then I'm just gonna quickly chop this. Has anyone gotten their knife, knives sharpened recently? Yes. Oh, you have, wow. I was like, okay, I, I don't think I was going to, but. That's awesome. I take them to cut, cut co Kitchen. Yeah. And you notice a big difference? Yes. Oh my gosh, huge. I even notice a difference between my knives at home, which I haven't gotten sharpened recently, and these knives here. These knives are much sharper than the ones I have at home, which is so nice to cut with a sharp knife. It's like having a brand new knife. It makes it fun. All right, you can take your, if you haven't gotten your knife sharpened and you want to, maybe you need that as a Christmas gift from, <laughs> from someone or for yourself. Um, you can take them to Cook's Warehouse. Uh, what's that other cooking store called? Sir Latab? Cutco. Sure 
Cutco is easy. Some. Now, do you need a Cutco knife to go to Cutco? No, they'll do all knives, any yeah, brand. Them. Wow, good to know. I didn't know that. That's awesome. So that might be a nice, uh, inexpensive cooking. Uh, I'm sorry, Christmas gift for you or for maybe for someone else, you know. It really does make a huge difference. All right, I'm just whacking these two garlic cloves here to get the skin off. And then I'm gonna mince these together. Anytime you're doing garlic, if you're cutting multiple cloves at one time, just go ahead and cut them together. It's so much easier than doing separate garlic. I feel like the more garlic you have there on the board, the easier it is to cut. It doesn't get all stuck to your knife. I did a complete clean out of my pantry last week. So everything in there, it's, it's not really a pantry, it's like a closet that I converted into a, a pantry with a bunch of shelves. And I've got all of the food for our whole house in there. <laughs> so it's not a big space and it needed some organizing. So I just basically like pulled everything out and then grouped like items together. I hadn't done it in a couple years, so it was way past due. And I found spices that were completely too old. <laughs> oh man, I wish, and I had wished you guys, I could see you guys because I had so many things like half bags of um, different ingredients like farro and quinoa. And I was like, man, if I could only give, I wanted to like do a little give out, giveaway. Cause they're basically like end, end bags of things that we've used in these cooking classes. <laughs> um, I needed you guys so I could give you some of the stuff from my pantry. <laughs> Actually, what's your, what's your rule of thumb with spices as far as length? I think some of mine don't have expiration dates on them and I, I just don't know. Don't know. Okay, one, one, you know, one thing you can do, which is not exact, but you could smell it. If it has no smell, then it's, it's done. Um, so if you have no idea how old it is, uh, you might, uh, and you smell it, if it has no smell, there might be a little bit of a smell, but, um, so it's not going to hurt you to eat it if it's old, but I would say if it's a ground spice, like these powdered ground spices, they do not last as long as the whole spices, like whole cinnamon sticks, whole uh -huh. cloves, whole cumin seeds. So if they're whole, they're going to last way longer. Even with the nutmeg, we're not using that today, but if you can buy whole nutmeg and just grate it yourself, it lasts, stays fresh so much longer, um, like years longer. <laughs> and, uh, but some of those like cinnamon, it's hard to grind a cinnamon stick. Um, so I would say two years max okay. on the, on the ground spices. And you can, if you buy it and it doesn't have a date, just mark it when you, you know, when you first buy it, that way you at least know when you bought it. Now you don't know how long it's been sitting in the store, but I would say two right. years is um, like very lenient. <laughs> but again, if it has no, if it has no uh, smell, then it's not gonna have any taste. So that's okay. one way to know. Um, I need to and then if you're- my 2021 project. Oh, I, it's, and actually now, um, I didn't really get rid of that much in my pantry, but I just kind of, you know, sorted it out and organized it a little bit. It's so much, I'm like so much happier to go in there and yeah. I actually used more of the stuff this week, I think, like the cans and things that had been in there for a little while because I had just, you know, I just didn't know what I had. So yeah, fun, not, I don't know, necessarily fun, but fun when it's done kind of thing. And also the rule of thumb I use on anything that doesn't have an expiration or best by date is when in doubt, throw it out because it's not expensive usually to replace, especially spices. Um, so when in doubt, throw it out. And actually at Fresh Market, which is where we shop for this class today, um, these little packets of spices, there's a good amount of stuff in here. And, um, these are not as expensive as some of these jarred spices. So, and I would say on the spices, um, you don't have to get organic unless you're 
corner, you know, unless you're, you're super concerned, I don't think there's any reason why you can't just get regular. Okay, so this is softening in here. I'm gonna get this garlic to go in and then we're gonna add some of the spices. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do with these spices, we do want them to hit the oil in here and kind of open up all of their flavors before any liquid goes into the pot. Um, so before I add anything else, actually I changed my mind, I'm gonna pre-measure these spices into this bowl so that when I do add them, we stir them quickly. There's no like lag time on how, how they, long they stay in there because once they hit the pan, they can burn. So I don't want to get chatting or have some delay in measuring. So that was the curry. We're gonna do cinnamon, which I stuck back here. That was one teaspoon of curry, one teaspoon of cinnamon. We have cumin, which is here, half teaspoon of cumin. Coriander. If you do not have all of these spices at home and you're not wanting to buy something that you may only use one or two times a year, I totally get that. You can modify this recipe to adjust based on your taste or, you know, what you have in the house. A little bit of cayenne. It is okay. You could do all curry powder on this if you want. Um, it's flexible, very flexible. Because uh, that is a lot of spices. One, two, three, four, five, wait, six. I was trying to, I was trying to use our holiday spices, guys. So I was trying to cram them in. But you don't have to use all that stuff if you don't want to. So I'm going to go ahead and, this is our fresh thyme. This just came in a little, I wasn't planning to buy it like this, but this is what they had and it looked pretty cool. So this is just a little tiny plant of thyme. And I'm just gonna take a little chunk of this. We need about one tablespoon. So I'm gonna take about a third of the plant, I think here, and just pinch it off at the base. It's really nice and tender. Maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna rinse it, so I don't want any soil in our soup. <laughs> so, Something like that. Rinse it off. Let's get a paper towel back here. Let's dry it. And then I'm gonna work on, actually the, the stems are so tender on this, I'm not even gonna worry about taking those leaves off. If they were more of a hard, this plant must be really, really young. If they were, if it was a thyme plant that had been in my garden for maybe a year or two and the stems were thicker, I would definitely work on stripping the, the leaves away from the stems, but those stems are so small that I'm not even gonna worry about it. So that's our thyme. Is anybody growing thyme right now? I don't know if it can over, I guess it can overwinter, right? It, it does overwinter. <laughs> So, and then you could plant this. I don't know if now is a good time to plant it. It might not survive right now. Does anybody, is any of our gardeners know, should we plant this right now or should we wait? It's probably more likely to live outdoors than in. So what, what do you have to yeah. do? <laughs> yeah, so what you're saying, maybe wait till spring. Keep it alive in the house? No, no, I'm saying in my house it wouldn't live till spring. I would go ahead and plant it. Oh, go ahead and plant it. Try it. Okay. Maybe bring it indoors if it's going to frost or something. I have half of it indoors and half of it outdoors. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that works. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add our garlic and our thyme. Give that a stir. The garlic only takes a minute or so. You also don't want that to burn. 
but everything is softening up nice in there. I'm not really browning these vegetables. I'm just trying to soften them. So we're on like a four heat level. And then I'm gonna add, these were all the spices, remember? I'm gonna go ahead and add those in. I'm gonna work on this squash here. So butternut squash, big, huge, right? If you do not have a sharp knife, you can soften this squash in the microwave. Google that though, because I don't know exactly how long it takes. Has anyone done that? To like soften it before you cut it? Not to cook it, but just to kind of, well, you can do that if you're worried at all about your knives being sh sharp enough, but it does help to have a sharp knife. So we've got the top, the bottom, I'm gonna se sort of separate this rounded part from the top straighter edged part. I'll set that aside actually. So peel it, to peel it, I just do it with a knife. I don't try to mess with the peeler because I feel like this is way faster. But you can, if you don't feel comfortable doing this with a knife, you can uh, use a peeler on that, like a vegetable potato peeler kind of thing on this. You just want to make sure you get deep enough in there to get all the all the way back down to the squash. See how orange it is? If you're left with more of a yellow, you may need to peel another layer. Then I'm going to go into rounds. This does not have to be cut pretty because remember, it's all getting blended. So you don't have to really take your time with this too much. You just want to get sort of even, you know, even-ish pieces. Can't you also oh buy it frozen, Ashley? You can. You can buy it frozen. I feel like the frozen has a fine flavor, but there is just something about having it cut fresh that really gives it an extra boost of sweetness and flavor and moisture and all that. You can buy it already cut up, like fresh, usually in the, in the produce section. It is a little bit more expensive that way, but that is that will work. But yeah, I'm glad you mentioned frozen. That is an option. And that's way easier, right? Especially if you're having like a day where you have low energy, but you want to eat soup. For sure. Try that. That would be great. Ashley, Ashley, someone asked, could you substitute sweet potato for butternut squash? You can. The flavor is going to be completely different because potatoes and Pota sweet potatoes are super sweet. I would maybe do, it would be more like a, obviously like a starchy or potato soup kind of thing, which is, which works great too. I would maybe do like half regular um, potato, maybe like a yellow potato and a half sweet potato just to, so it's not so, so sweet. And I would not use that apple with it either. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add these in to our mix here. The spices I just kind of left sitting on top so they wouldn't burn. So they haven't actually been stirred into the bottom yet. We're using about four cups of squash here, which um, let's just eyeball it, right? So I think I have probably at least at least two and a half, three cups in there. So now I'm going to work on the base of this thing, which is a little trickier. Number one, I'm going to get rid of this peel. Okay, that's the timer on the granola. So as soon as I get this done here, I'm gonna grab that. And then the difference here with this part of it, it's got seeds in it. So I gotta scoop those out. Let me turn this off. Check it, okay. Ooh. I'm gonna stop it and leave it like that for just a second. Let me grab a spoon because I got to scoop these seeds out. How are we doing on time? What's our, what, does anyone have the time? So I usually have a clock uh, on my phone, but I, 11.43, okay. So let me just scoop these out real quick. This is a good soup to make ahead of time because the flight, like any soup, I feel like this is true for all soups. The flavor is better the next day. You can also freeze this just like any other soup. 
freeze this so that you can just pop it out of the freezer whenever you need something quick to eat. Is anybody make um, using butternut squash right now or like a fan of using it and how are you cooking it? Oh boy, I love it. <laughs> uh, I'll take the whole squash with the peel on and put it in the oven okay. and then just bake it and then uh, scoop it out to serve yeah. it. Yeah. Any special seasonings or just sort of straight up? No, I straight up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it down. I to, now I know some people like eat the peel when it's super soft. Is anyone doing that? No. If you put it in a pressure cooker and you get it like super soft, you can actually eat the peel. It's crazy. So no <laughs> one's tried that yet. Maybe that'll be another another day. <laughs> it's good with butter, brown sugar, and maple syrup. Butter, brown sugar, and maple syrup. There you go. <laughs> that sounds like a dessert. A vegetable dessert. Okay, so that's our butternut squash is in there. All the spices are in there. Um, let me put our apple in now. This is just a, well, your recipe says Fuji apple, which actually this happens to be a Fuji apple, but you can, the type of apple is flexible, depending upon what you have. I'm just coring it and sort of cubing it, similar size to what I cut the butternut squash so that it all cooks at an even rate. Um, chopping, chopping, chopping. Lots of chopping in this recipe, but if you decide to buy the butternut squash pre-chopped, that saves you a lot. Okay, so now I'm gonna add our liquid. So give this a stir. It has a wonderful smell. We're using boxed stock, although you could use your own homemade vegetable stock or chicken stock. This happens to be chicken stock, but this is my favorite brand. If you're gonna buy it, it's called Imagine. The, the, if, they, if you can find the vegetable stock version of this, it's really good. Um, they just didn't have vegetable, they only had chicken. Um, so either one, but this is a really good tasty brand. I feel like there are, there's a lot of stocks out there and some of them aren't very good. <laughs> so it helps to have one that has a flavor because then if it's not good, then you're messing up the flavor of your soup. I'm turning up the heat here so because we're going to have to boil this and simmer it and get these vegetables soft. I'm not really measuring the stock here. One of these containers is four cups. But the six cup measure is dependent upon the, te the texture that you want. I do know that I need to have the vegetables at least covered in this. So you want, I probably added six-ish. But yeah, one trick is just, you just want your vegetables to be covered. And then at the end, once we puree it, you'll see kind of how thick it is and all that. Okay. So I'm gonna put the lid on this. It's not gonna have time to go the full 30 minutes. I'm hoping it'll at least have enough time to get soft enough so we can, I can show you how to use the stick blender. So let me go back over here to our granola and check on that. Let's see, let's stick this back here. Throw this in the trash. I need someone in the class to give the, Usually I give the, uh, if we use the potted herbs, usually I give those away. Guys, so much to look forward to when we can be back together. <laughs> Ashley, we did have another question. Can all of the ingredients, the butternut squash, the apple, can these be cooked in a pressure cooker? Yes, this whole recipe. If you have an instant pot or a pressure cooker, yeah, that's a great way to reduce the cooking time. Um, everything is going to get pureed, so it doesn't matter if everything is like soft and extra soft, I should say. 
Um, so yeah, go for it. And I would, you could reduce the cooking time. Um, I would say maybe 15 minutes or so at, at high pressure. I love the pressure cooker. I haven't, I don't have an instant pot at home, but I'm sure I would love that too. I just have an old school pressure cooker, which is kind of the same. Not exactly, but I am going to add a little salt to this, which I did not do yet. And then we're going to check on our granola. All right, let me bring the granola over. If I can find, let's use this. And we had another participant ask, can you tell us what's the difference between a stock and a broth? Okay. So um, let's see what these containers say on them. These say broth. Okay. I'm going to have to go back to my, like going to culinary school. So I think the technical definition is that a broth is not cooked with the bones. So the bones are used, then it's called a stock. So, but I feel like most brands of like boxed um, ingredients are, use them interchangeably. What did I say on the recipe here? Stock. So if you're, if you're cooking vegetable stock, you can't use bones. So anyways, that's my definition of it, or at least what I remember from culinary school. Um, I wouldn't get too worried about the difference, though. I think boxed companies use them interchangeably. And obviously, it doesn't matter if you're making it at home. So this is our granola. You can see there's like some nice, after it cools, you'll see like some of these nice big chunks will hold. Um, let me show you. Let's see what I can find to serve this on. Um, we'll just use this little guy here. So this is what we do at my house. Um, we just use plain yogurt. I use whole milk yogurt just because I have two kids that are two and four. So we don't try to go low fat with them, but you could use a low fat if you want. What's the calorie Gr count on the granola? On the calorie, I, I don't, I have not calculated the calorie count on the granola. You can use, there's like an online um, calculators that you can use on the granola. I have not done the calorie count on the, on the granola though. But you can enter, there's like websites where, you, has anybody done that before where you enter the ingredients and you can get the nutrition facts? If you want to calculate, you can. There are a bunch of sources up there, out there on that. All right, so I'm just giving this a stir. This is just plain yogurt, so you're avoiding um, lots of sugar with it. And you could go just plain, which is what I would do. But if you're not used to plain, you could take, I would try it with plain first, actually, with the granola on top. But if you're at all, not so sure because you think it's gonna be sour. Um, you do get used to that taste though. Let me grab another spoon, sorry. You can drizzle a little bit of maple over top of the, um, and a little bit goes a long way on that, but you can drizzle a little bit of that um, maple syrup on top. But like I said, taste it, taste it without it. Oh, here I'm. Granola is flying all over the counter. <laughs> so this, and then with some fresh fruit, it could be berries are sort of out of season, but you could do fresh apples on top would be nice. Um, whatever fresh fruit you like on top of there. But apples go really well with maple syrup. So I might try just some cut up apples and that'll also add some sweetness to this. My soup is boiling and so that should be ready in just a second. Let me show you, I'm skipping here. So let me put the granola over here. Let me show you this um, stick blender. 
You can use a regular blender to blend the soup. You can actually eat the soup without blending it if you, if you want to. Um, but this is a, like a, it's called an immersion blender or stick blender. It allows me to blend up the soup and make it nice and smooth inside the pot. So I don't have to transfer hot boiling liquid to a blender, um, which is never fun. It is possible, but <laughs> not, not um, the easiest. Easiest thing to do is use a stick blender with this type of blended soup. Um, does anyone have this at home? Or have you guys seen this before? Uh, yeah, we have one. I have one yeah. too. Yeah, so I think they're probably like $20, $20 um, or something like that. It's just nice if you do like to have blended soups, this is a nice option to have. So, all right, tell me the time now. What's, I'm wondering if I need to go Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to blend up our soup then so you can see that process. All right, so let me move this. I gotta move our pot a little closer over here because my extension cord is not long enough, but that's all right. So turn this off. Like I said, it's gonna be boiling hot. this out of the way. Okay. So in real life, when you don't have a timer on you, you're going to let this go much longer. Let's see. Is this, is this not working? Oops. Oh, come on. I've never actually used this one before. Whoops. Let me see if our outlet works. Hold on, guys. Technical difficulties with the blender. Press to detach. Hmm. Okay, now you're probably, you're, you may see me put hot liquid into a blender then. Okay, that comes off. Let's make sure that clicks. Okay. That should work. Let me see if the outlet, let me see if actually the outlet doesn't work. Let me just plug it like directly in. Maybe there. Huh. Try it on this side. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Can't and unplug I was, that one. I wanted to remind no. everybody too if you ever miss a live cooking demo, we have all of these recorded on our website at cscatlanta.org. You can also find any recipes there too. So if you miss an event or want to go back and get a copy of the recipe, you can go and visit our website mm -hmm. um, and like find those under the nutrition tab. Right. I will use the blender. All right, guys, you're going to get to see me use the blender with hot liquid. How fun. <laughs> I can't figure out that stick blender. This happened to Julia Childs also. <laughs> oh, you got it? Oh my gosh, all right, there was a trick with this one I did not know. All right, can you put the camera over here? If I move it over this way? Let's put this back here. Oh, with that extension cord? Okay, sorry guys. It's how do you make the equipment work and then how do you get it in the camera? Those are two different, two different <laughs> things to figure out. All right, here we go, right here. Now I got it stretched to this side. All right, there's a trick with this one. You have to press two different buttons. Who knew? Interesting, you have to hold that now. Okay. So easy to use this. This is. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> yes, I'm not, I'm not selling this product, by the way. I just like it. <laughs> as long as your liquid is not too hot, you can uh, have your kids or your grandkids do this. I just would worry that the liquid might splash on them. It's actually, even though, you know, this stuff, this technically needs a lot longer to cook. It's gonna be totally fine. 
that is the good that's a skill that you need when cooking is improv like improvising where needed it's helpful just to go at it with no fear it's gonna work you'll figure it out all right that's pretty well blended at least enough for me to show you um it looks awesome actually so let's see if i can get this off never mind i'm not gonna worry about that let's just i'll put it here and clean that mess up later <laughs> okay let me grab a bowl let me show you here the texture that I would prefer for this. You don't want it too thick because you do not want to feel like you're eating baby food. So I'm just a little bit in the bowl. And then you're gonna, the way you can kind of figure this out, actually if I have a smaller spoon, you can see it better is you're gonna try to just pour it yourself into the same, like just pour it in there. If you see, and it just, just smoothly drops back into the bowl, if you start seeing it pile up as if it was thicker like applesauce, I feel like that's too thick. If it's, and you can test it in the pot before you pour it into the bowl. Um, if it's too thick, just add more stock. Adjust the flavors as needed, um, or I mean, sorry, adjust the texture as needed by just adding a little bit more stock. And then to serve this, I love just some plain yogurt in the center and then a little bit of fresh herbs. You, this is cilantro. Your recipe says, um, I just happen to already have this. So I didn't buy um, parsley, but you can use cilantro or um, dill or I like just a green herb on there just for color um, and taste also, but um, it just gives a little extra nice color to it. So that is the soup. Woo, got it done. <laughs> uh, any questions on the soup? Looks delicious. Oh, good. So you those made are it. two. I know, right? <laughs> Woohoo! It's not hard. It's not a hard one. It just, um, it looks like it has a lot of ingredients, but it's not hard. I promise. We did have a couple questions about the granola. Okay. Um, one question was, is it hard to find molasses? Can you kind of find it in a regular grocery store? Yeah, you can. Look in the section where they sell like maple syrup. They should have it. Um, and if they don't, you can leave it out. It basically is giving you the more of the taste of like a gingerbread cookie. Um, but if you cannot find it or you do not want to buy spend the money on it, just make it without it. You, it's totally fine. Okay. I'm, I'm all about, when I'm at home and I'm cooking, I rarely ever follow the ingredients exactly unless I have everything. If I don't have the ingredients, I just, you should practice making substitutions where you think you can, but based on what you have in your pantry. You can also add different things in. If you have spices, like let's say you had nutmeg, and you wanted to use that up, you can add nutmeg to actually either one of these. Um, so the point is try to improvise and use what you already have on hand. Don't, I would not buy molasses if you're only gonna use it for this recipe to make once a year um, because I don't like food waste. <laughs> so it's flexible. Okay. Um... Yeah, it sounds like be flexible, have fun. Um, I think the, yeah, next yes. question, the next question was, I think you said for the granola that you could substitute the coconut oil. Someone asked, could you substitute it for grapeseed oil? So grapeseed oil, I think so. Yeah, it's not going to have any flavor, so it should be totally fine. Yeah, I think that'll work. I don't see any reason why that won't work. It can hold up to high heat. It's not got a strong flavor to it. It's going to act exactly like the olive oil. You might, even with the olive oil, you could probably lower the amount a little bit. Um, I would try like three tablespoons to see if that gives you enough uh, moisture because it's going to stay liquid. See how this kind of, as it cools, you can see it like, it's got some nice big chunks in here. But, um, so if you, if you switch out to an oil that's um, liquid all the time, then it's not going to be, 
like kind of hold together as well, but that's okay. It's not, not a big deal. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, what kind of apple did you use? The apple I used was Fuji. Your recipe also says Fuji. Um, but you can use Gala or um, Honeycrisp or Pink Lady. You can adjust. Like I said earlier, I'm all for using whatever apple you already have in the refrigerator um, or, you know, what looks good at the store. Do you think Granny Smith would be too tart? I think that'd be fine. If you like the flavor of Granny Smith and you want a little bit extra sourness, yeah, go for it. I think that's great. Anything else? I love hearing all your voices, even though I can't really, the way I'm set up here, I can only see myself. I can't see you guys, but I think I can recognize some of your voices. <laughs> All right, so try these out. Yes. Just a big thank you as always. It's always good. Oh, Thanks. yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Thank, thank you. I wish we could all taste it. <laughs> I know. That's the challenge. I Actually, know. You're just going to have to make it yourself. Yeah. We did have another question come through. Um, for the butternut squash recipe, could you use, I'm going to, I wonder if I'm pronouncing this right, kabuka squash? Kabuka squash? Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. You can, any of those orange um, squashes like acorn, you can even use a mix of those different kind of squashes. I love that kabocha squash. That's, that one's orange, right? Do you ever wrote that? It's like an orange, orangey red color inside. There's also a squash called red curry squash. It's like a hard squash like that too. Um, those would all work really well. The only one that does not going to work is like a spaghetti squash. That one has a completely different taste and texture, but any of the orange hard squashes will work great. Um, did you use, uh, what kind of curry did you use, the yellow or the red? I used re this yellow. It has a mix of uh, coriander, turmeric, cumin, fenugreek, cayenne, ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, <laughs> cloves, and nutmeg. Wow, that's a lot. So it is yellow from the turmeric. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, this because we use the curry in this, it does have a little bit like of an Indian mm -hmm. slant to it, which is, is delicious. What would be the difference with uh, the granola to use the fresh um, ginger than the powder or the crystals? Um, I don't know. I've never made it. Oh, I like the crystallized ginger. That's a great idea. Um, I would go with the crystallized ginger over the fresh ginger. I'm worried that the fresh ginger will not, um, like cook through. So it will be almost like a raw taste to it, mm. which might be too strong, but the crystallized ginger, if you, if you're familiar with that, it's like, um, you buy it in the dried, like where you would buy nuts and things like that, like dried fruit, um, but it's ginger that has sugar coated on it. Um, mm -hmm. So you can chop that up really fine and it gives it a really, really nice flavor if you've ever had that. They, sometimes um, doctors or nurses will recommend that for nausea mm -hmm. to eat if you're feeling um, your stomach is upset. But yeah, you can add that in here, if, especially if you already have it. <laughs> Don't yeah. go buy it, but if you already have it in the pantry, that would be a really nice compliment to this. You could keep the ground ginger if you want it extra gingery and then uh, add also that crystallized ginger. That's a great idea. Yeah, you are right with ginger. I made my, um, um, uh, my uh, sweet potato souffle with fresh ginger. I mean, Ooh, it, yeah. It was delicious. I love ginger flavor, but it was very strong. It doesn't yeah. cook. Yeah, you're right. Thank you for the tip. That's great tip. Sure, yeah. Um, is it sometimes, do you think some seeds will work with the soup, like sunflower seeds to put on the top with of the, the soup? Oh, yeah. I love that idea. Yes. I mean, you could actually, if you want to get crazy, you could, I, I think I already dumped it in the trash, but you could take 
the butternut squash seeds, clean them off and um, roast them. like toast them or roast them um, with a little bit of salt. And then you could add those on top oh. if you want to get extra, if you want to get extra fancy, or you could just buy like pumpkin seeds or something and toast them or so, like you said, sunflower seeds. I love that idea. Yeah. Um, so it's a great I one. Buy the, I buy the butternut squash at Costco. Mm -hmm. The boxes are two, two, two pounds and there are five ninety nine. And yeah. do you think they go, it's not the same flavor as when you just chop it at the same moment? Is it fresh? It's fresh, right? Fresh, yeah. And it's easy yeah, I think you have to peel it. Yeah, you'd have to test it to be sure, but... Costco has such a high turnover. I bet they're super fresh. Oh, yeah, I bet they're, I just worry when they've, if they've sat in the store for a long time, um, if they mm -hmm. get kind of dried out, they don't have quite as good of a flavor, but um, you, the only way you know is to test it, but I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure that's a great alternative, especially if you're just not going to cut it yourself, then yes, definitely go for the pre-chopped or the frozen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I know, much easier, right? Yeah. yeah, it looked very, it was nice to see you today because for me, when I see the butternut squash at the groceries, it intimates me. It thinks it's so difficult. So you broke a, a taboo for me. Thank you. <laughs> well, I will say the key in making it easier is this having a sharp knife. It doesn't need to be a fancy knife. This is not a fancy knife. It's just simply sharp. Having a sharp knife is so key in cutting any of those, anything, even onions. Um, makes it yeah. so much easier. Where do you take them to, to get the, the knife um, sharp? Sharpened? Yeah. I just happen to take it to Cook's Warehouse because that's convenient for me, but um, there, look around, like do a Google search. And then if you find a cooking store close to your house, call them and ask them if they do it. Um, mm -hmm. Or they might know of another store close to you that does it. Um, I know there's several locations, usually like, especially the independently owned cooking stores will do it. Um, and you basically just like, you can wrap your knife in some newspaper or just take it in a bag and then um, they'll give it back to you in a couple days. They can't do it right there in the store. They usually send them out to somebody to do it. Um, but usually they're ready in like two to three days. Thank you. But it's so worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. You were great. Thank you for oh, your good. Awesome. You are so thorough. It's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Is this your first time um, yeah. to a cook? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. I'm very excited. It was great, great. And you are a very nice person. Very, oh, thank you. You communicate perfect and you explain many things that really opens a lot of doubts. So thank oh, you. Oh, awesome. You're very welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Happy holidays. I know, happy holidays. This has been such a weird year, but you're right. It is almost Christmas. We just, woo, and Hanukkah and all the holidays, woo. It has been wild. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, hopefully you'll join us in January in our new kitchen. Um, the class, I think, is like January 25th. So it's towards the end of January. So by then we'll be ready for like extra healthy post-holiday food. <laughs> I think the topic is wintry stews. Is that right, Ashley? That sounds right. Oh. Yeah. That'll be something nice and warm to look forward to. For sure. Well, I think that was it for the questions in the chat box. Thank you, everybody. As Ashley said, please be on the lookout for January's program. Um, and again, please visit our website where you can see any additional information on other programs going on. And we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. If you're interested in other live or recorded programs, please visit the online program tab of our website, cscatlanta.org. Or follow us on Facebook. We'll be sharing additional information on upcoming programs.